Welcome back. Today in our Sunday Spotlight, the Denise Tesenzo Foundation Walk to Fight Rare Diseases. Last year, the foundation hosted its first walk. The second annual walk is happening this Saturday on Quinnipiac University's campus in Hamden. And we're hoping you can come and help raise money for the National Organization for Rare Disorders, also known as NORD. Here with more on the walk and how the funds that are raised will help is Dana Neves. She's a member of the Denise Desenzo Foundation Board, also happens to run Channel 3 as the WF FSB Regional Vice President and General Manager. I can't even say your title. It's a lot of titles. Just the lady upstairs. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being with us. So this is the second event. Last year was a big success. Tell us what we're expecting on Saturday. Well, hopefully the weather will be great because that'll really help. Uh, we're looking for 250, 350 people to come out and raise awareness. So um, if we backtrack to Denise's career, she was very fond of shining a light on certain stories. And some of those, many of those, were people who had rare disorders or a disease you'd never heard of. So when the foundation was formed, we sort of looked at it and said, well, what can we do in this community inside Connecticut that people would say, oh, yeah, that aligns with Denise. That's how I always thought she was. And this rare disease, children and adults who are fighting fights that no one could even imagine aligns really well with that. So we approached Nord and they were over the moon because they will be the first to tell you they get very little support. They get very low funding. They're fighting for people to recognize diseases, not cure them. They just want everyone to know there's like 7,000 unnamed diseases. And those people have no health care. So you know, it was a really good move for the foundation to go with Nord. And so the walk is to just raise awareness about those diseases. You know, and last year before the first walk, we had Catherine Cook, Denise's daughter, uh, join us by Zoom. And she was telling us that one of the things that she thought was would have touched her mom was that there are so many. There's breast cancer walks and there's walk to fight hunger and there's there's big causes. But Denise always liked those little causes, those micro causes. And this is a way to help a lot of those micro causes in one day. Yes. Oh, true story. And Catherine nailed it. So I'll echo that. And I have a memory of talking to Denise about exactly that. And she said, you know, everybody knows a pink ribbon on a lapel or a purple ribbon on the back of a car. She's like, but what if there was, and she would make up colors, a magenta. You wouldn't know what that was. And you probably would never go and find out. Breast cancer, a lot of the cancers. Um, have these massive machines of marketing and these folks don't and so absolutely she would be floored that there's a walk that people are going to it's getting TV time it's getting print to say just come out and learn what you can learn maybe someone can be someone else's guiding light you don't know you just don't know it's always amazing to see the crowds at these things because these are people who didn't just click on a like or decide to donate a couple bucks but they actually got in their car and drove out there and participated in the walk it's a two mile walk it's a pretty flat walk from what I've heard yes. around the campus so it's not like we're hiking you up a loop. mountain yeah. and back down the other side <laughs> There is a virtual option if you can't make it on Saturday. Just want as many people as possible. I mean, so many people in Connecticut shared every evening with Denise as she covered the news for all those years. This is a good way to give back. It is. And I think virtually, maybe you grab some people and you do it in your cul-de-sac, or you just like it and share it to your social media. The women at Nord are amazing, and they would say, if nothing else, if five more people understood that there is a whole cache of diseases that no one knows anything about and those families need help and it's not always monetary it could be resources or somewhere to stay um, they would be happy with that so it's the exposure so whether you're in there virtual or you're walking or if you just want to share something to social media that's a win Obviously, this organization aims to do lots of good uh, in Denise's name. I know the telethon that was uh, hosted here by WFSB earlier this year raised over $50,000. So the idea is just to come up with causes that can keep Denise's legacy and all the good work she did going. Yeah, um, this is a big part of it. Integrity in journalism is another one, and it sounds like a sneaky tease, but in the next year or so, I think there'll be a pretty big announcement from the foundation about something um, that bears her name about journalism specifically in Connecticut so that you know we're working on that and then just being kind so organizations come to us and say hey we could use a little bit of money and we look at them and if they're just doing really good in the community that falls into it but there is specific things um, rare disease and those who cannot have find a voice or have a voice that's really important and that's really Catherine and Wayne her husband's biggest mission is to carry that on in her name. Well, I know they both spoke. There was a golf tournament for the organization last fall, and they both spoke and just said how touched they were by all the support they had, and for sure Denise would be as well. And it just speaks to the kind of things that, that, that she threw herself behind during her wildly successful career here. Yeah, it does. I think that um, for them it's cathartic to carry on work that she was 
that she was doing so well and that she was trying to do. Denise had an amazing opportunity. She was so popular. She was on a very strong TV station. And she used to say, that microphone is also my responsibility. And so Catherine and Wayne saw the foundation as a way to carry that on. Her, the, you know, Denise's voice might be silent, but her legacy isn't. And so these little things all add up to just do good in Connecticut. Tell people how they can find out more about the foundation or the walk. So the foundation and the walk, everything, is on WFSB.com. It's also on the app. I just checked it to make sure it's there. So if you scroll down, it has a big tile for the Denise Ascento Foundation. You can register. You can read about it. And then we hope to see you on the 29th, 10 a.m. All right, you see all the information there. And as uh, Dana just said, the Denise Foundation. Uh, dot com. You can also go to WFSB.com. You can go to the app. All those different options for you to get out there and find out that information and participate and help a cause that would for sure be uh, close to Denise's heart. It would mean a lot. Yeah. Dana Neves, Vice President and General Manager of WFSB. <laughs> yes. Did I get it right? No. No. I tried. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. You're Hopefully welcome. you'll see a lot of people out there at the walk. That is CT23 for this week. We'll meet you back here in Studio A next Sunday morning.